Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have uh, our next conversation. Uh, of course, uh, the business environment is quite difficult with the Russian Ukraine war in its uh, fifth month. Nigerians are feeling a harder pinch with the scarcity of energy resources, uh, wheat and fertilizer, uh, over what importers attribute to logistics issues, as well as a worsening uh, foreign exchange scarcity. The inflation rate is also rising astronomically, uh, as well as a stretch in the over 41.6 trillion naira debt servicing. It's really an issue. It has exceeded revenue generation uh, in its, its scary situation. Now, according to the World Bank, they're saying that they see an elevated risk of recession in Nigeria over the next two years, uh, reflecting the greater potential for the geopolitical tumult, what they call it, a stubbornly high inflation that re reduces households' real disposable income uh, and a central bank's intense focus on fighting inflation first, which raises the risk of financial sector accidents uh, on top of the sharp tightening of financial conditions already seen. Those are the words from the World Bank. Now, this situation is added uh, or added to the already negative impact of COVID-19 on the economy. It's put a strain on not just individuals and families, but businesses in Nigeria. Now, how can business owners succeed despite these very glaring challenges? We're talking about thriving in business in the current economic climate. Sharon David Onamusi is our guest uh, on the program this morning. Uh, he's a business expert. Um, he started several businesses, you know, for instance, at the age of 24, Sheung uh, opened a multi-million Naira franchise of a very popular um, shirt, you know, suit tie, you want to call it uh, store in Abuja whilst uh, undergoing his National Youth Service uh, Corps. Uh, he was also awarded an honorary doctorate degree at the age of 33. Um, his best is crafted as a result, driven maestro in entrepreneurship, was passionate about creatively using enterprise as a tool for sustainable uh, progress. He is currently the CEO of Steel Dapper UK, one of the makers of uh, David Jacob by Dapper, luxury leather goods brand designed in the UK and manufactured in the EU. Um, <laughs> uh, David, thank you very much for your time. Quite an interesting. Uh, Shemo, thank you very much for your time. Rather, quite an interesting, impressive um, uh, profile you have. Now I understand why you're looking so dapper. I was telling you of air. Uh, I don't know what you want to take from you, whether it's the suit, the shirt, the tie, the pocket square, or your eyeglasses. Uh, but I surely you take one. You put it in the box and you send it down to me in Nigeria. <laughs> Good morning to you. No problem, bro. All no right. problem, so Good morning. Now um, I, I we know it's a global, you know, uh, you know, globally challenging times for businesses, for individuals, for households around the world especially after coming off COVID-19, you have the Russia-Ukraine war putting the strain on energy resources and on prices of gas, and then also translating into, you know, uh, household items and transportation and all that in the world. Um, but is, is the pinch on businesses as, as hard as in the UK as it is in Nigeria from what you can tell? I'm sure you've been following the situation in the country. Well, the, the pinch is there. Um, globally, uh, the UK is currently sitting at about 9.1 um, to 10% inflation rate. Nigeria is slightly higher than that, sitting at about 17% inflation rate. Uh, however, we are feeling the bronze of it. The gas prices have gone up by almost 200%. There are certain food products that have gone on by 200% as well. So the, we are feeling the pinch in terms of households. And in terms of businesses, of course, there's not a lot of disposable income in the economy like it was prior to the inflation. So that's also affecting businesses. Um, so it is a global pinch. I was also on the phone with uh, some colleagues in San Francisco last night, and they are complaining about the same thing, that across America, the inflation prices are starting to affect their businesses. And you also have supply chain issues that are being affected as a result of it. Hmm. So, so uh, how is it? You've talked about some of the, the situations right now and, uh, you know, of course, uh, supply chain issues and all that. Uh, how is it that a, a, a one war in one part of the world is so, so powerfully, you know, extremely affecting uh, uh, businesses around the world? I mean, we have had you know, several wars in the past. Gulf War One was there, Gulf War Two was there, the war in Afghanistan 
was there. Uh, what is different about this war in the corner of Europe that is, is, is making it the, the effect so hard on the global business landscape? Yeah, I think we underestimated, or globally, everyone underestimated uh, the, uh, the input of Russia in world economics. Uh, we didn't see that they were um, at a position where they can control uh, the pricing for products like wheat. Prior to the war, a lot of people didn't know that more bulk of the wheat that we enjoy in Africa and other parts of the world come from these parts of the world. Little did we know that Ukraine supply issue or the war in Ukraine would affect um, these uh, supply uh, sales channel. So I think it's the underestimation of Russia and its response um, to global sanctions. That, those are the core reasons why we, we kind of fall in at this point. Um, in, in the country over here, we're having uh, in Nigeria difficulties, very, very high uh, prices of diesel. People are not being used, are not used to paying, you know, buying diesel at such amounts. And of course, you know, the, uh, the power supply situation here isn't uh, exactly ideal. And so businesses have to power, um, you know, the, the, the themselves, you know. So if you have a, a power dependent, uh, power heavy uh, business as an entrepreneur, you have to spend loads of cash to, to buy diesel, purchase diesel that was, uh, has increased uh, astronomically. Um, so for Nigerian businesses, how you know, uh, can they, or let's start this way, how have you in the UK and as a business that is global navigated this, this challenge you know, to stay afloat and, and to succeed and to thrive? Yeah, so I think the first thing was realizing and coming to the terms that I'm not alone. It's a global crisis um, that is facing everyone. So we have to, first thing I had to do was come to the terms that this is not just a Sean David Anomacy enterprise issue. It's not just a still dapper UK issue. It's an issue that is across the world. And that kind of gives me peace to realize that I'm not on my own. Um, but in navigating it, some of the key things that I would encourage people and I've done myself is first of all, understand the global economic landscape. Um, I think this has taught small businesses most especially that they need to keep an eye on the economic landscape, how gas prices are affecting household incomes, how uh, consumer good issues are affecting disposable income. So that's a very critical thing. So I have to first of all, you know, put aside my business hats and put on my economic hats so that I clearly understand how supply and demand affects um, the economic landscape as a whole. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing it will be to invest in yourself. What I've had to do is spend more time investing in myself, realizing that I already had gaps before the inflation hits. And a lot of business owners sometimes, because they're so passionate and um, driven to achieve whatever they want to achieve, they often have blind spots that good times don't show. Bad times show the blind spots quite often. So I've had to sit down and analyze my blind spots and then get help where needed. So I had to look for coaches, I had to look for um, strategies and uh, other experts within specific areas. For example, financial modeling, right? Understanding what my in incoming, uh, um, my income is and what my outgoings are. Clearly understanding that cash flow has really helped as well. So investing in yourself is very important. Then the second, the third thing will be investing in the people around you, around your business. So I've had to sit down my social media strategy and start to, you know, change the metrics that we use prior to the hard times. During the tough times, we were more concerned about reach, how many people we had following up on social media platforms. Now we've changed it to look at engagements. So we're using engagement as a metric now, rather than how many people we have following us on social media. Because when we engage them, we have a better chance of selling to them. We have a better chance of meeting whatever customer problem they have. 
So that's also critical. So I had to spend time with my team to understand what are their blind spots as well and invest in their, in, in, in their growth as well. All right, interesting. Um, uh, now, looking at, you, you know, you're based in the EU and the UK, uh, manufacturing there, the manufacturing you know uh, space in this country and the challenges are significantly different. And uh, Elliot talked about power supply. Um, what can you say about the Nigerian space, and what can you add? Uh, what do entrepreneurs need to add to what you've said, uh, you've learned, and you've implemented to keep your business up? Uh, what can they also add from their own challenges? What can they do about the peculiar challenges here in the country? Yeah, so with regards to doing business in Nigeria, I, I back in 2009 when I opened up my store, it was still a high inflation rate compared to the UK where I was coming from, compared to other parts of the world. So we had only dealt with this sort of second tier um, position when it comes to businesses. The ease of doing business was not, uh, was not any better back in 2009 compared to now. So one of the things that I would encourage um, Nigerians to do is knowing that we don't have the basis for a sustainable business uh, environment, i.e. the power supply, we have to start to think creatively about how we approach our business. So for example, Nigerian businesses can start to think globally when they are selling. You have to realize that technology has helped us to reach a global audience. There's nothing stopping you from making sure that your bulk of your activities, your marketing activities on, on the social media or anywhere on the internet is focused at getting customers outside Nigeria. I know that you know inflation prices might be high in Nigeria and customers might not be buying, but compared to how much a pair of shoes is sold in the UK, for example. If you're a shoe business in Nigeria, you can start to target the people in the UK, people outside the country as well, because your price will always be lower. You will still have a lower price of production compared to the EU. Same thing with if you're in the service business, you have to start thinking about getting clients outside Nigeria. And to do that, you have to position your business in the right way your language has to be different in, even in terms of accepting foreign currency you have to start looking at how to start uh, taking dollars as a means of exchange within your business as well look at payment platforms that you can integrate into your websites so that um, you can start to take business from outside nigeria so thinking globally is very critical second thing uh, will be around guerrilla marketing right this is not the time for you to cut down the cost on marketing. You have to think about creative ways in Nigeria to get customers. Um, I feel like, you know, one of the things I did when I started my business in, in Nigeria back then was I had to go out and go to different groups and engage with them and, and talk about my product and talk about my services because that was the only way that I can reach them. So you have to start thinking guerrilla marketing. This is not the time for you to rest on your own. It's time for you to get out there and engage with customers quite often. And the third thing will be your existing customer base. In marketing, it's, it's well known that it's much cheaper for you to keep an existing customer than it is attracting a new customer. So it's time for you to dust off your database and start to look at email marketing, how to look at, you know, how do you keep this, your existing customers um, as, you know, ex you know, consistently buying from you, by engaging them, sending them birthday messages, sending them um, special occasions, reaching out to them at those times. It will, be, it will be critical because remember, people have a lot on their mind at the moment. And if your business is not at the forefront of their mind, they probably will go somewhere else with their business. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so you're saying the strategy is to, to try and sell business abroad, try and get customers abroad, try and get clients abroad. And uh, I mean, the dollars, uh, the pounds, uh, the euros will do you some good, especially in a time where we have, we have the declining fortunes of the Naira. Uh, falling 11% uh, in recent days. Um, how can how can businesses source for customers abroad? This, this some people just don't know how to go about this. 
Yeah. So sourcing for businesses from abroad is relatively easy in this technology landscape that we have. Uh, take a poll of your social media, for example. Go through your insights and you start to see the people following you. You will notice that half the time you have followers that are outside Nigeria as well following you. For example, my business, I have more followers in the EU um, and in uh, United Arab Emirates than I have from the UK. So what I then do is target that. So when I'm doing my marketing uh, campaign on social media, I'm specifically choosing the audience in UAE because I already have a base there. So in your social media marketing, you want to make sure that you narrow your target audience when you're spending on there. Another way is partnering. You can reach out to people, Nigerians in the diaspora, and start to partner with them and speak to them. Okay, you already understand the customer base out there. You understand how businesses are run out there. Can we partner? Can we have a you know a distribution um, agreement where my products will be produced in Nigeria and you take care of the distribution as well? So these are ways that you can definitely um, target the diaspora and get people outside the country to buy your product. Interesting. Um, you talked about leveraging technology just finally and uh, using the, the power of technology in terms of m social media marketing, you know, guerrilla marketing and all that. For those who are not we're not um, really business or you know, technology savvy, uh, this might pose a challenge. Absolutely. And, and challenging times would mean that you have to think differently, right? So it, it will be challenging first. Uh, and you don't have to do it all by yourself. You just have to have a clear understanding of how it works, right? Back in the days, we had newspaper advertisements as the critical way of getting businesses. We had billboards. We had all the outdoor marketing. Now, a lot of people are on their phones, so you cannot ignore them. You have to just think about a way of partnering or getting new, um, getting the expertise that you need. So reach out to people who are in that space to consult for you um, so that you have a clear understanding and then run so you don't have to do everything yourself. I don't do everything myself. As much as I know about social media, I have a team that does social media for me, especially when it comes to my businesses, because I can't do everything myself. So it might be challenging, but you're going to have to not ignore it anymore, because that's where your customers, they're ready customers there. They have their phone with them on a regular basis. You can reach them directly. Interesting. I wish you had more time uh, to go into other aspects of this conversation. But what you've given us is quite, quite interesting and uh, deep. Uh, I'm already getting some ideas from, from that. Uh, Sheon David Onna uh, Mosi is uh, the Chief Executive Officer, Officer of Steel Dapa UK, who are the makers of the David Jacob uh, by Dapa Luxury Leather Goods brand uh, in the UK, designed in the UK and manufactured in the EU. Uh, David, thank you very much for your time and uh, for your interesting uh, insight into uh, how businesses can uh, not just stay afloat but succeed in these times. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, David joined us from the United Kingdom, in particular St. Albans. And uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at the ongoing Commonwealth Games uh, in the United Kingdom, Birmingham, to be precise, and of course, the forthcoming FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. Stay with us.